Hello, and welcome to Connie Safety December Digital Safety Con. I'm Katie Olson, a national safety consultant with Connie Safety. Before becoming a safety consultant, I spent a majority of my career as a safety manager in the pharmaceutical space, particularly in manufacturing. So I know the unique challenges that are faced by employees in that industry. During this Digital Safety Con, we will be sharing some insights to help those of you in the manufacturing industry keep your employees safe. First, I will be sharing some of the services available from our safety consultants and how you can make Connie Safety go to work for you. Then we'll hear from some of our top vendors as they highlight some of their product solutions to the problems faced in the manufacturing industry. First on the agenda, let's take a closer look at some of the capabilities of our consulting group. As a safety manager for a contract manufacturer in the pharmaceutical industry, my main focus was on protecting employees and ensuring compliance with OSHA regulations. Compliance is an issue that many companies have trouble with. Uh, you can see that just by looking at the number of violations that occur each year. The violations that are shown here are from 2019, but I can guarantee you that the numbers and the top cited standards are going to look similar in 2020 because they haven't changed much year over year historically. And we continue to see the same standards being violated. And some of the ones that are shown here on the screen are from the construction standard, but the general industry standard, which is where manufacturing lies. So we have to ask ourselves, why do we continue to see the same standards violated year after year? And there's really three reasons for that. Um, we can kind of you know, pinpoint three underlying causes of OSHA violations as it pertains to broader gaps within your organization when it comes to safety management. So current research has identified three underlying causes for violations to OSHA regulations. And fortunately, these are all things that we can help you with um, within our Connie safety consulting business. So training is the first one. Um, you know, either a lack of training or not the right training um, is, is really one key aspect to ensuring that you're avoiding OSHA violations. Connie safety consultants are able to provide you with customized training solutions to suit your safety needs. So whether it's just a one-off training or you need us help to help you you know, put together a full training curriculum, we can help you with that. Training can be performed on site uh, currently right now with a, a little bit of extra precaution or can be done online. And you're always gonna have one of our highly experienced instructors that is going to be providing that training for you. In addition to a lack of training, a lack of inspections tends to also be one of these underlying causes for citations to OSHA violations. Inspections um, you know, range from basic equipment inspections to full-scale facility inspections. So if you wanted us to come and just do your annual fall protection competent person inspections, we can definitely do that. Or we can take a more holistic approach and perform a, a full OSHA compliance audit and take a walk around your facility. Um, we can help you even develop custom inspection protocols for your business based on what it is that you do and what some of your main concerns are. Uh, for example, we can help you put together energy control procedures that are specific to the equipment that you have within your manufacturing process. And then the, finally, the third underlying causes to the citations is oversight. And that can be looked at you know, from a very broad scope all the way to you know, how you're managing your overall safety program, all the way down to you know, how your frontline supervisors are really enforcing safety. We can help to coach your management and frontline supervisors on how to effectively lead your safety management program. And we can help you just put in place a safety management program if you don't already have one. Um, we've, we have found that these safety management programs really help to drive not only engagement with our employees when it comes to safety, but also how the managers are interacting with the employees and really how they're enforcing your safety program. Well, so how do we do it? How is safety, um, you know, working with a safety consultant like Connie Safety different than working with any other safety consultant that you may have come in contact with? 
And really the answer to that is we take a team approach uh, and really help to provide you with integrated safety solutions by working with vendors like those that we're gonna hear about later today on the webinar. So we're really about making sure that we can incorporate all aspects of a solution for you, whether it be a compliance issue, a documentation issue, or putting in place some type of personal protective equipment or engineering solution to help make your safety program as, as well-rounded and comprehensive as possible. So one of the first things that we're able to do with you and when we leverage our, our safety partners is to give you a, a solution that's really complete from start to finish. So this example that we have here on the slide is a manufacturer that really was having a hard time um, determining where they should be setting up their, their anchor points for their fall protection on their roof. Um, you know, from start to finish, we were able to go to the facility, walk, walk around the facility with them, make recommendations, and then also work with the vendor to, you know, put these corrective actions in place. And we've seen this in, in you know, other respects as well. Hand protection is one that is particularly troublesome for, for folks. Uh, so we have consultants that are able to go into your workplace, really analyze what it is that your employees are doing that is presenting the hazard, and then work with you to come up with the customized solution in terms of offering hand protection, which then leads us to our next point. Um, you know, we really are able to leverage our vendors to provide resources to our customers that you might not necessarily be able to get anywhere else. Um, so in this particular example, it's, a, it's another fall protection example, but here we had a very unique scenario where uh, there were essentially a big tank farm that our con our customer had and they were looking at a way to protect employees when they had to walk up on these catwalks and there was no out-of-the-box solution that was just going to be right. So we worked with the customer, the engineering team at the, the customer's facility as well as with 3M and was able to put together a custom solution with them. Um, so really utilizing some of the products that already existed within 3M but then developing some new products as well. So there really is this exclusivity that you get when you were working with a safety company, um, you know, if you have other consultants that you've worked with in the past, I, I think you're, you're just not going to get that um, because we already have the very solid relationships with these vendors that allow us to kind of take the next step when it comes to providing these solutions for you. And also another benefit of working with vendors is that we're, we're really on the cutting edge of safety innovations. If there's a new product that is coming out, we're going to be the first ones to know about it. And we're definitely going to be ones that are able to kind of pair those new innovations with the, the issues that you potentially have at your facility. Um, you know, so, so some of the examples that we've we've seen in the past is the, the introduce, introduction of the new 3M hard hat um, that has a chim strap on it is, is really kind of helpful for, for very different scenarios. It's very unique um, in terms of the protection that it applies in the applications that it could be used for. Um, you know, another example is the, uh, the one-handed earplugs, you know, and we, we have a lot of people who have asked questions about, you know, is there a way that we can get these earplugs so that they can be inserted with one hand? And we were actually, you know, one of the first people to get some of these sampled uh, um, that we were letting our, our customers try out and they were pretty excited about it. So, um, you know, just know that as these new um, innovations, these new products are coming out from the vendors that we're working with, you know, not only is our sales team sitting in on all of the, these calls and these training sessions, but we as the consultants are too, um, so that we are better positioned to help you identify a solution to take you into compliance and make sure that you are protecting your employees as much as possible. So to close it out, you know, working with Connie Safety is, is different than working with another safety consulting firm because we have, you know, not, not only are we backed by the knowledge of our professionals, but we're also backed by the, the experience of those who are in the PPE and safety industry. We have tons of vendors that we work with. We can help you address threats to compliance in your workplace. Whether it's fall protection, lockout, tagout, whatever the case may be, if you are running into an issue and you think that there's potential for noncompliance, we can help you.
We provide those integrated solutions to, to meet your safety needs. We are going to work with vendors. We are not going to stop until we find a solution for you. Whether that means, you know, sending you samples of five or six different gloves, we're going to help you find what you need. And we're going to reach out to any vendor that we think is going to be helpful in that process. So how can Hikani Safety Consultants help you? What are your needs? What can we help you with when it comes to making your site a, a safer, more compliant place to work? I would encourage you to reach out to us if you have any questions. Um, I am, you know, if you reach out to the email that's there or you give that phone number a call, it's either going to be me or one of my other colleagues who is also a safety consultant that can answer questions for you. So with that, I thank you for tuning in and listening a little bit about what Connie Safety can do and how you can put Connie Safety to work for you. Earlier in my career, I was an EHS manager for a pharmaceutical company and I was involved in a major manufacturing facility expansion. When it came to designing our facility signage, Brady made it simple with their safety and facility identification products. From pipe labels to egress markers, Brady had everything we needed. Here to talk more about Brady's helpful facility solutions is Mike Nornberg. Well, hello everyone. This is Mike Nornberg with Brady Corporation. And uh, this morning we're here on behalf of Connie Safety. And we want to present to you um, a little bit about what Brady's safety solutions are, give you an overview of, uh, of who we are as a supplier to Connie. And um, essentially what we're going to cover today is, is give you an overview of who Brady is and what we're about, some of our solutions, uh, and in particular, uh, solutions around facility identification, our uh, printing systems for safety and facility identification, a little bit about our spill control business, uh, and a little at the end um, to touch on our safety services that we have available uh, at Brady. So to give you a quick rundown, Brady um, has been in business for over uh, 100 years, probably about 105 now. We're, we're headquartered in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Um, sales of about $1.1 billion. Uh, we are a publicly traded company, but um, Brady has always been a family-owned uh, business. And so the Brady family still does have uh, a, a very strong interest in the, in the business and stays active in, uh, on the board of Brady, but we are publicly traded uh, on the New York Stock Exchange. We've got about 6,400 employees globally, and the map on the bottom right kind of gives you a feel for where we operate uh, as a business. So really the cornerstone of everything that we do here at Brady is innovation. Um, as our founder, Bill Brady said, uh, we do things others don't in ways they can't. So uh, we've spent a lot of time, effort, and, and money on innovating and bringing new products to our customers, helping them solve the critical problems that they face uh, in an ever-changing world. Um, so what that means is um, we have about 250 people that are employed in our R&D labs. We invest about $40 million a year in R&D. We've got about 375 patents issued. So, so you know, we really take that seriously and uh, we work very hard to bring new products, new solutions uh, to our customers. So we take our business and we, we kind of divide it into three groups. We have products that are really focused on safety and facility identification. We have products uh, really focused on wire and cable identification, more for like the electrical and datacom markets. And then we have uh, identification products that are used mostly in say an OEM application, uh, say a manufacturer that's uh, making uh, printed circuit board components and things like that, um, or rating plate type labels that would go on the back of a product like a computer or something like that. That's the third section, but all around identification uh, overall is what we do. So for the purposes of today's discussion, we're gonna focus on our safety and identification solutions, okay? So when you think of that, this is what we mean by safety and facility identification from a product perspective. So signage, um, things like spill control, 
um, pipe markers, lockout tagout gear, floor marking, and then the printing systems that you see in the center, both bench top style like the blue one or portable like that yellow one in the center. So let's take a closer look at this. So when you think about facility identification, facility safety, this is kind of a typical cutaway view of a, of a manufacturing uh, operation, okay? And so the numbers designate different uh, needs within that facility for the solutions that we provide. So number one, lockout, tagout. Um, any piece of machinery that has more than one energy source uh, to it needs to be locked out whenever it's being worked on or maintained. So that's an OSHA requirement. So, you know, Brady has the lockout devices uh, that help control those energy sources that help render that machine, machine safe to work on. Okay. Um, number two, which is really more signage and area marking, really applies to the entire facility, whether it's safety signs or floor tape to mark off maybe hazard areas or things like that. Um, you know, the safety signage and facility marking, big part of, uh, of what's needed in a general manufacturing area. Hazard communication, well, of course, if you're using any type of uh, material, uh, liquids or powders even, um, in the operation, you have to communicate whatever hazards those materials represent to your employees. So hazard communication uh, really takes into account um, what are the physical hazards of the materials that you're using uh, in that facility, okay? So part of that is identifying the containers that uh, have those materials in them, whether it's a 55 gallon drum, uh, even in a, a bulk storage tank, or even if you take those materials and break them down into smaller containers, maybe a five gallon bucket or a quart, you know, jar or can or things like that for use out in the shop, they all have to be labeled. Okay, and to warn the employees uh, of what the hazards are associated with those materials. Uh, emergency egress is important too. So how do you get out of a facility in case of an emergency, right? So that's exit signage, it's wayfinding uh, markings and things like that. Um, spill control kind of goes hand in hand with that hazard communication thing. So if you have any types of liquids in the facility, whether it's you know cutting fluids or solvents or acids, bases, that kind of stuff, um, you need to have a spill control plan in place to prevent a release of any of those materials into the environment. That's more of an uh, more of an uh, an EPA thing than OSHA, but still, uh, you need to be prepared. And so we have the spill control products to help you contain any type of uh, spillage of those materials. Um, Lean and 5S, of course, you know any facility or any operation that has an initiative to uh, uh, reduce uh, waste to make things more efficient. Um, we've got signage, the printers help make some of that stuff to really bring information to the point of need uh, to help streamline and, and make a facility run more smoothly. And then lastly, arc flash prevention uh, is another important thing too. So if, uh, if you have a lot of electrical panels, electrical lines and switch gear and things in your facility, properly identifying if there is a hazard associated with that from an arc flash perspective, uh, we can provide the labeling and signage for that. So just a few of the uh, important areas where uh, Brady products can be uh, deployed throughout a manufacturing facility. Okay, well, you know, um, a, a discussion about signage and marking would be, uh, would be lacking if we didn't talk a little bit about um, COVID-19. Obviously that's been a hot topic here for the last many months. And so Brady has developed a, a numerous new solutions around um, social distancing awareness, um, personal hygiene, things like that. So another big part of what we've been doing within the last few months from a facility ID perspective. Floor marking is another area where our, our line has really grown quite a bit. Um, really giving you a, a very uh, broad range of options for floor marking, whether it's more economical uh, vinyl tape that you see on the left um, to our tough stripe line, which we've developed over the last couple of years, which uh, is extremely durable, very resistant to cutting, um, 
sticks on the floor really, really well. But also, when you want to change out the uh, the tapes, uh, it's much easier to pull them up because they do hold together. They don't break up into small shards on the floor and you have to go scrape them up. So they're much easier to change. Um, and then recently, the Tough Strike Max, which is a very uh, thick kind of extruded material uh, that holds up extremely well to uh, to rough traffic in a, in a uh, manufacturing environment. So big part of our facility ID line. So let's talk briefly about printers. So um, when it comes to facility ID, a lot of things that, that customers need are, are custom. You know, um, maybe the signs that we carry that have the st standard stock legends don't quite get there for customers. They need to make them personal or personalize them for that particular operation. And this is where the Brady printers are very, very powerful tools. So what you see on this page is the BBP37, which is our multicolor uh, and cut printer. And on the left, a representation of all the things you can do with it. So really a broad range of stuff that help you customize the messaging and the information you have in your facility uh, for your operation, right? So for instance, on the far left, the gradient scales, if, you, if you've got, uh, you know, markings you want to put on a storage tank or you want to mark valves and things like that, uh, put warning labels around equipment. Um, these are great tools for getting those jobs done. This is a this is a kind of a look at the lineup of our print on demand solutions for safety and facility ID up at the top. So we have um, essentially we have eight different uh, printers, all with different capabilities. Uh, depending on your needs to uh, help you create that type of facility marking as you see in the bottom left. So really the key benefits of having one of these systems is it's a significant cost savings for you uh, versus going out and having custom labels and signs made when you can do it right then and there. Um, these things are easy to use, they're very intuitive, uh, and you don't have to wait. You can print them when you want it, how you want it, where you want it. We have a wide variety of materials that you can choose from and sizes and colors based on the job you need to get done. And all the systems have a five-year warranty. So uh, we back them for a long time and we do have te technical support available right here at our corporate office in uh, Milwaukee, Wisconsin. So there's just a phone call away, okay? All right, so that's the labeling solutions. Let's move on quickly to lockout tagout. So as we talked about earlier, it's an important part of any um, operation when you have equipment uh, that you need to service, locking out the energy sources. So we have a broad range of, um, of energy source devices from electrical to gate valves and uh, ball valves. Um, we also have a new line of padlocks, safe key, which you see in the upper right which uses a specialized linear key uh, that reduces the amount of uh, potential for key duplication and things, keeping your, your team much safer. And then we do have a, a software solution called Link360, which helps you create your own lockout procedures, kind of track your lockout program and when those procedures need to be updated. So a pretty broad range of solutions for lockout tagout. Moving on to spill control, um, Brady entered the spill control world back in 2007 when we acquired a company uh, by the name of Spill Control Products, at that time based up in New Jersey. Um, that business was established in 1977, and um, we moved the uh, operation to a new state-of-the-art facility in Louisville, Kentucky, as you see in the picture there. Um, and what we do is we manufacture what's called melt-blown polypropylene which is kind of the building block for a lot of these spill control products that you see used out in industry. Um, really a state-of-the-art facility, huge warehouse operation. Um, you know, we do have uh, a lot of specialized products, which I'll share with you in a, in a, in a moment, um, but just tremendous capacity. So uh, as we've seen demand ebb and flow over the years, we've got the capacity to keep up with it through our, our new facility here at Louisville. So what we're manufacturing are really kind of four different categories of products. In the upper left, you see the pads. Um, generally, these are you know just a kind of grab and go kind of thing um, for picking up spills. Uh, the pads come in a number of different uh, varieties, different thicknesses. Um, 
Some have an affinity for just oil-based materials, which generally these pads would be white. The gray pads would be more what we call universal, where they can pick up uh, oil-based or water-based spills. The yellow materials are really more of a high visibility thing, so they're easier to spot on the floor and typically are universal as well in terms of what they pick up. So rolls as well. So if you have longer runs that you need to you know, spread the material out, socks are great around machinery right, to prevent spills from kind of migrating further out onto the floor, creating a, a slippage or, or fall hazard. And then pillows can be used under equipment and have a really, you know, really high uh, absorb, absorbent ca capacity to pick up spills around and under machinery. So we take a lot of that stuff and we put them into kits as well. So um, if let's say you have a specific area in your facility where you want to have materials readily available uh, in the event of a spill, you can put a spill kit there, um, whether it's a small tote like in the top center or more of a spill slash recovery drum setup like you see in the far left. And these come in numerous different configurations. You can get cabinets for them, you know, and we also do custom spill kits as well for customers that have specific needs. Okay, so moving on quickly here um, to our services capability, uh, just as a, as a heads up, some of the things that we do as well around lockout, tagout, arc flash, and confined space. So we talked a little bit about lockout, tagout before. Um, Kind of an, uh, the next, I guess, level for uh, lockout tagout compliance is really uh, having machine specific procedures written for your technicians to use when they're working around that equipment. So it basically gives them a step by step um, instruction on how to safely de energize that equipment and make it safe to work on. So that's what these lockout procedures are for. It is an OSHA requirement uh, and it is just part of the safety services that we provide for lockout tagout compliance. Um, arc flash, uh, for those of you that um, aren't familiar with arc flash, that is a uh, uh, really can be a, a dangerous thing that can happen uh, in a facility when uh, technicians are working on energized electrical panels right if there is uh, if they somehow are inside the panel while it's while it's live and they uh, they bridge across two conductors or a conductor in a ground um, it can create what's called an arc flash incident which can be a, a very violent blast of, of uh, and release of energy so we want to warn people about those hazards with each of those panels or switch gear they may be working on and so we can help customers assess what their risk is associated with the arc flash hazard. And part of that is, uh, you know, determining the level of risk with each one, helping them understand what kind of protective gear they need to wear, and then helping them identify those panels and switch gear throughout the facility. So that's our services for arc flash. Um, lastly, confined space. Um, you know, uh, these are areas within a facility where there is what would be called an entrapment or engulfment hazard. So, for instance, like a, uh, a storage tank, you know, putting someone inside that tank maybe to clean it and there's only one way to get out. OK, so we need to have uh, a procedures in place for how we approach entering and working within a confined space. And so that's something that, that we also provide on our services side. Okay, so that's just a real brief run through on, uh, on who Brady is and when the services and products we provide around safety and facility identification. So I hope you enjoyed that and um, we hope to hear from you very soon. Thank you. The manufacturing industry poses many unique hazards, particularly to hands. Equipment with moving parts or materials with sharp edges can cause injuries with a wide range of severity. The proper glove is crucial to ensure your employees protect their most valuable tools, their hands. Here to speak to show us range of hand protection products is Jeff Reederer. Hello, thank you everybody for hopping on today. My name is Jeff Reederer. I'm the territory manager here at SHOA. I cover the state of Wisconsin. Uh, you can see my contact information is below. Should you need anything, please feel free to reach out. 
So first thing I wanted to go over today is the nitrile situation. Everybody um, is aware nitrile is hard to get. It's going to remain hard to get. But I just want to give you kind of the latest on the state of the market. Uh, so we are continuing to see supply chain issues that are resulting um, now in uh, a lot of lowered supply as we have for most of 2020. Um, part of that is due to some international nitrile shortages. So the raw material is actually getting harder and harder to come by, um, which of course makes it difficult to make nitrile products. On top of that, all of the, the COVID surging that's happening around the world um, is continuing to keep demand at an all time high. So again, we're in that same situation uh, where uh, supply is low, demand is, is quite high, and we're having a very hard time keeping up. And it's, this isn't just a show of discussion. This is something you'll see across all manufacturers. Um, everything I'm being told, it sounds like the first half of 2021, at least, will be quite similar to 2020. Um, Nitro is still going to remain difficult to come by, unfortunately. Uh, what you'll see is, you know, we might have a bunch and then it all goes away. And then we might have a bunch and it all goes away, just basically as ships hit the dock. Um, that being said, here at SHOA, we did decide to invest heavily in a new factory down in Alabama. So this is actually a investment we chose to make before COVID even existed. Uh, now it just is proving more and more timely. Um, so we are going to be making a lot more domestic nitrile. So stay tuned for that. Uh, likely won't be online until Q2, Q3 of 2021, um, but it is coming. And we're also working on ramping up a couple of new facilities in Guatemala, which make a lot of our nitrile uh, chemical gloves and things like that, kind of the thicker, think uh, dishwashing style gloves, um, trying to get as, as much product as close to uh, the U.S. as we can, uh, because this nitrile um, surge here isn't going to go away anytime soon. So we are working on it. The long-term forecast for nitrile is going to be very strong. Uh, because of these investments we're making. Uh, there's just going to be this short-term lull as all of this kind of comes online. So breaking from that, one thing I did want to go through is just kind of some general hand injury statistics, um, talking a little bit about hand protection, kind of more high level, and then we'll get into a little bit of cut protection, uh, a little bit of chemical protection, and then some insulated and general purpose options. I'm not going to throw 10,000 SKUs at at everybody. You know, this is just kind of a um, kind of a top three, top five style conversation, just to get the gears turning. Um, show you a couple of new options we have out there that have been, excuse me, have been going very well. So roughly 120,000 hand injuries happen on the job each year. Um, and about half of those are the results of cuts and punctures. Now, depending upon which website you go to, you know, of course, the ha average hand injury is somewhere between $7,500 and $22,000, which is quite the range. Um, but as you can imagine, there's a big difference between a few stitches and amputations and nerve damage and things like that, uh, on top of, you know, the number of days missed of work and all of the lost productivity and things like that that happen. Now, of course, our first goal is to try to engineer hazards out of a certain application as much as we possibly can. Um, and then the hand protection, the PPE, is really kind of the backup, if you will. OSHA estimates that about 70% of these hand injuries could have been prevented if the proper PPE was in place. Uh, the other thing that a lot of people often overlook is, is chemical injuries, both short and long term. You know, the short term chemical burns and things. Um, as well as the long-term exposure to certain chemicals and, and um, cancer and the long-term effects that that may have. Uh, it's about every week or two that I have conversations with facilities that are using gloves that really aren't offering their employees any protection against certain chemicals. Um, you know, permeation rates for various chemicals vary from a few seconds to maybe eight hours. And so knowing exactly what chemical matches with what type of glove is very important. And that's something we will talk about uh, here in a couple of slides. But oftentimes people tend to focus on the cuts and the punctures and for good reason, because they cause a lot of the injuries we see on the workplace. Um, but it's also very important to make sure that 
chemicals, even, you know, people think of, you know, hey, brake clean is a pretty mundane chemical. Everybody has it. Uh, but it's actually, you know, pretty nasty and it's hard to, to find gloves sometimes that protect against it. So that's kind of one example um, of where chemical protection is really important. So again, starting here with cut protection, one thing that we can offer is both virtual and in-person glove assessments. Of course, with the way of the world right now, um, in-person assessments are becoming more and more difficult to do uh, just because of the um, the COVID restrictions and things, but we can certainly offer virtual assessments um, or even just kind of a, a think tank where we all hop on a virtual call, we talk about applications, what gloves are currently being used, and I can pull up uh, spec sheets and pictures and examples of, of various types of gloves that may be better, they may last longer, uh, they may uh, be more comfortable, they may be less expensive, you know, there's a lot of ways we can look at this. Um, they may offer better protection, things like that. So that's all part of the conversation and something that we can offer uh, that a lot of people are taking advantage of right now, uh, simply because you know we're all sitting in front of, of computers a lot here uh, on my side of the business, um, and these virtual calls and virtual conferences have been going really well. So I, I did just want to highlight a few styles. Like I said, each slide will kind of have a, a few top styles that I've had a lot of success with and have had customers be very happy with. Um, so the first style is the 386 and the 546. So that's this lower left, um, lower left picture right here. It, it, is a, it is an A3, that's the 386, it has a nitrile dip. Um, it's brothers, the 546, which is just a polyurethane dip. Um, but these are both very economical. They're A3s, but oftentimes they beat out a lot of A2s, both on price, comfort, and durability. So I've had a lot of success with those lately. I've seen these A3s almost take the place of a lot of general purpose gloves as well, uh, because even situations where people are wearing general purpose, sometimes there are still you know, cut hazards or minor puncture hazards or things like that, um, that it's nice to just have a little bit of, of cut protection. And moving to this glove in the upper left, this yellow and orange glove, that's actually the 4568. Again, it has a brother as well, the 4561, which is the same glove, just a black palm dip. The orange is nice from a visibility standpoint, but this glove is made right here in America, and it's a Kevlar glove with a nitrile dip. Um, and I've had a lot of a great success with that. The 581 kind of going up the spectrum. So from A3 to A7, you know, we're kind of going up in that cut level protection. That f 581 is phenomenally comfortable. It's an A5, um, but it, the way it fits the hand and the dexterity it has uh, on top of that embossed nitrile palm makes it a, a real all-star. That, that's one of my favorite clubs that we offer. Uh, and then the next one just this A7, uh, which is the number 257. It's also a Kevlar and stainless steel combo with foam nitrile. Now, don't Feel like you have to write these down. These are really just examples um, covering the gambit from the A3 to A7. Lots of different applications can be covered with just these four gloves. And if you're watching this live, there will be a PDF uh, attached to the presentation that'll have all of these uh, styles on it. And so you can just download that um, and you'll have kind of what I consider my, my top styles where durability and price and protection all kind of meet at that perfect point. Now, moving on to chemical protection, again, something that I discussed a little bit earlier, um, chemical protection can be very, very tricky. Now, it's really important for any chemical in the facility to make sure you have a glove that matches that chemical so that if OSHA comes in and they say, you know, why are you using this glove for that chemical, you can show them, here's the permeation information, um, here's the degradation information, and this is how long it protects them, here's how often we're changing them out, things like that. Now, a lot of times there's no way to even know that a glove has failed. You know, a lot of people I often hear say, well, you can tell, you know, your hand gets cold when the chemical gets through, but I'm looking at permeation information and that chemical probably broke through within a minute and they're wearing it for an hour. Now, they didn't know the chemical was breaking through and their body was absorbing it, uh, but it was still happening. There may not be a visible sign that, that glove has broken down. And of course, there's a lot of short and long-term effects that can be ha had from, um, from chemical exposure. 
Now, one resource we've put together is chemrest.com. It's a fantastic resource. Really what you can do there is you can type in your CAS number or the chemical name, and it will populate all the different gloves and tell you how long um, that permeation rate is for that chemical. So very, very useful tool. Now it doesn't have every chemical out there, of course, um, but it does have a lot. So the other thing to note is a lot of these different chemicals that we're seeing are mixes, you know, various percentages. There's a big difference between 90% of a chemical and 20% of a chemical, of course. And that's where you, it's really good to get me involved. Um, because what I do is I'll take the SDS sheet and I actually send it, we've got several chemists down in our facility in Georgia um, that I talk to on a daily basis. And they are really, really helpful in making sure that we are recommending the, the best glove um, for the right application. Because sometimes, you know, people go way overkill. They have a glove that lasts eight hours and is super expensive, but they only need it for incidental contact, where if a little bit spills, you can take the glove off and throw it out. It's like, well, let's just use a, a less expensive glove there, because should you spill chemical on the glove, you know, maybe all you need is 30 minutes of protection, and then you can replace the glove, as opposed to having a very expensive glove um, that doesn't need it, or oftentimes it's vice versa, where they're using a glove that may not protect as long as that employee needs to be using it. So chemicals are something that is very important to uh, to get us involved with, and we are more than happy to help out and, and make sure we point you down the right direction. Now these are, again, just some examples. Uh, the top two are both nitrile. The one on the left is like 15 mil, the one on the right is a nine mil, you know, various compositions. The two on the bottom, um, have neoprene and, and various mixes in them. Neoprene is a very versatile material to protect against a, a wide variety of chemicals, but some chemicals might do great with nitrile and not great with neoprene and vice versa. Some might not do well at all with nitrile, but protect very well with, or you get a lot of protection with neoprene. So again, that's where it's very important to make sure we're using the right glove with the right chemical. Um, the one glove I do really want to highlight on this page is actually that 3416 on the lower right. Now, that glove is a cut glove. It's a chemical glove. It offers heat protection. It's kind of a do-all. I mean, that glove can um, fit a lot of applications that are some of the more difficult applications to find gloves for. So that's, a again, I kind of call it one of my all-stars. Now, this is the last page with, again, just a few pieces of product on it. Um, these are the, our general purpose and in insulated gloves. Now, obviously, as winter's coming around, uh, any sort of dock work, outdoor work, things like that, it's getting cold. It's actually snowing here today. Um, so insulated gloves are, are often overlooked, but they're incredibly important. That 406 on the upper right is one of my favorites. It's a double-dip latex um, insulated. I wear that glove often when I'm outside. Very comfortable. Um, lasts a, a long time and keeps my hand quite warm. The other glove that I really like is that Temres 282 on the lower right. That glove actually breathes, so you don't find your hand getting um, kind of clammy and things when you wear it for a long time. Obviously, it's insulated, um, waterproof, and breathable, and, and just very comfortable. Then switching gears over to kind of that general purpose. Now, general purpose um, doesn't offer any protection like your cut gloves and things do. However, because of the grip involved, um, often can help reduce fatigue, uh, as well as things slipping out of your hand and, and the injuries that that, could have, um, that that could cause. Now, again, going into winter with the dry air, corrugate is incredibly drying and abrasive. Uh, and this winter, you know, you see a lot of box handlers who have cracked hands, bloody hands, things like that. Putting general purpose gloves on them makes all the difference. They can grip the, the boxes easier. It's a lot more comfortable. Their hands aren't cracking and drying out. Um, and this Atlas 300 has been around for ages, and it still remains one of our top styles. Uh, but we've, you know, pushed the envelope quite a bit. That 381 on the lower left is kind of the latest and greatest as far as general purpose gloves. Uh, it's actually a microfiber shell, so it's it breathes, it's sweat wicking, it keeps you very comfortable. Your hand doesn't get sweaty in it. It's very nicely, has a really nice embossed nitrile grip on it. Um, that is kind of the, the Cadillac of general purpose gloves right now on the market. 
Um, but we do offer a lot of different options and I'm more than happy to send samples to try as well. So keep that in mind um, if you're interested in just trying a certain glove in a certain application, whether it's cut, chemical, general purpose, or insulated, uh, don't be afraid to reach out. That's all I have for you today. I just wanted to go through a few of those key topics, kind of point out a few products that are kind of new um, and things worth considering. Again, if, if you would like a free glove assessment, any sort of chemical glove recommendations, um, or ways that we can reduce costs or improve safety, uh, definitely feel free to reach out. And I look forward to hearing from you. Thank you so much. Proper maintenance of equipment is critical when it comes to a successful manufacturing operation. One aspect of equipment maintenance that poses a unique hazard is work on live electrical parts. When it comes to clothing that can help protect against arc flash, my first choice is always Chicago Protective Apparel. They specialize in custom protective clothing solutions and can work with you to develop a product to meet your needs. Sam Sherman is here to tell us more about Chicago Protective Apparel. Hey, I'm Sam Sherman with Chicago Protective Apparel. Um, I know that uh, tuning in right now are both some end users and also a number of Connie safety reps. Um, so if there's anything in this video that you have any further questions with, um, if, you're, if you're with Connie specifically, reach out to me directly. Uh, my number is 847-636-2440. My email address is sam at chicagoprotective.com. Um, if you're one of the end users on this call and you have any questions about anything that I go over, um, please reach out to your uh, Connie rep and uh, they will put, put, uh, put you in touch with us or um, you know, go through that, that combination of, uh, of communication to ultimately get to us and, and hopefully answer any questions that you have. Um, I work in outside sales here at Chicago Protective. Um, Chicago Protective, if you're not familiar, is a, uh, we're actually a company that's been around for about 107 years. Um, we're a family-owned company. I'm actually the fourth generation. Uh, my great-grandfather started the company a uh, long time ago. Um, as I mentioned before, I work in outside sales alongside my counterpart, Dan Karp, who's our national sales manager. Um, as I'm sure many of you are aware, uh, there hasn't been a whole lot of traveling uh, lately because of you know, obvious reasons with the pandemic. Um, but we've all been able to kind of shift doing things like this, um, opportunities like this with the, you know, through through webcams and virtual meetings and all of that, I think like many of you are probably accustomed to at this point. And I'll talk a little bit more about that later and how we've sort of um, formatted a lot of what we do into in the services we offer into you know the, the kind of new era of of um, you know sort of e sales or e conferences things like that. Um, so to give a little bit of background, uh, when you think of Chicago Protective, um, I really I'm going to talk about these things throughout. Uh, the, this presentation, but I really want you to think about heat and cut um, and, and clothing. So if, if there's high heat, if there's a cut hazard, um, I really want you to think about us as a, as a go-to, specifically um, for kind of those harder uh, jobs as far as, um, you know, we want to be the place that you come to, obviously, for your safety standards, and I'll talk a little bit about that in a, in a couple minutes, but, you know, whether it's the green, the FR cotton green jackets for welding or the coveralls, uh, or welding beanies, whatever that might be. Um, those are all good and well, and we do stock those things. But for us, we we really like it when you can come to us with those really kind of unique, uh, unique problems where maybe you're working with a customer and they're saying, you know, I've gone everywhere and I can't find this cus this sort of jacket or this this kind of pair of pants or this apron or this glove. Um, and if it's in that high heat space or or cut protective space. Um, whether it's welding or foundry, whatever the case may be, we would really like to be uh, given that opportunity to really try and um, problem solve. Because at the end of the day, we really are problem solvers here. Um, I know that you probably hear that from a number of vendors when it comes to, you know, they want to be your problem solvers. Um, I think that we really foundationally believe in that and, and have the capabilities um, to solve those problems for you. Um, and and we, I always like to say personally, I want to be the easiest vendor that you work with, especially because so much of what we do is customized. So much of what we do is made to order. Um, as far as it's not just you know flip through a catalog and pick an item, we want you to come to us and say, um, you know, this is exactly what our customer is looking for, and we can actually make that happen. Um, some of the ways we do that, we actually just moved into a new building about uh, four months ago now. It's just down the street here in Skokie from our last building, but the main big difference with it is that. Uh, it's about three times the size. Um, so if you were to see our last building, um, 
it was it was we really cramped everything in there. It was pretty amazing what we were able to to manufacture. We we manufacture um, pretty much everything in the United States here in, in Skokie. Uh, we do have a facility down in in Mexico, um, in Acuna, Mexico, which will manufacture sort of larger runs. If if you're looking to get twenty five thousand coveralls or, or or jackets, they might be coming from Mexico. But anything that we do there, we can make in the United States. And like I said, primarily most of what we manufacture is is here in Skokie. So. The new building has really allowed us um, some things that we weren't able to do before, just in terms of capacity and in terms of really stocking a lot more items uh, that we weren't able to in the past just because of that limited space. So I want to just, uh, we have a, a new catalog coming out, uh, actually, probably by January 1, you'll see that new catalog. Um, that's going to be our largest catalog we've ever had. With us, it's a little bit challenging because uh, we do have, you know, we've made I don't know, tens of thousands of items roughly over, over our 107 year history, um, probably even more than that you know, items wise. Uh, but we do so many custom items and there's so many different projects that it's hard to kind of fit everything into a catalog. But if there's ever a catalog that we are gonna make that, that has everything in there, this is as close as, as it comes. Um, but in the meantime, we do have, and everything I'm gonna show you, we have in PDF on our website, chicagoprotective.com. Um, so this is our, our old main catalog, which you may have seen in the past if you've ever seen any of our any of our catalogs. Um, this kind of, if you were to flip through it, you're going to see sort of a sampling of of all the different products that we that we work with, whether it's jackets, pants, um, leggings, aprons. Again, all all primarily FR clothing, um, all protective clothing you're going to find in that catalog. But what we actually did more recently is we broke our offerings into um, a number of different segmented catalogs depending on the industry so this is our most popular catalog by far um, it's our foundry protection catalog i'm just going to flip through to give you an idea but this is when you're talking about steel mills you're talking about aluminized clothing sorry if that blinded anybody right there um, both aluminized uh, fabrics are going to be in here as long as swatches and you're also going to find non-aluminized but um, flame resistant and molten splash molten metal splash resistant uh, fabrics in here as well so again, the nice thing with all of our catalogs is at the beginning, you're gonna see all the testing information about the testing that goes into the, to these fabrics. You're gonna see just basic designs and ideas, some different styles. Um, again, whether that's chaps or pants or aprons or sleeves. Um, and then they're not gonna find many specific products in here. This is more about the fabrics and kind of talking about what they do and what they test against. Um, but that's a really good reference guide to kind of start out with when it comes to foundries. And again, that's going to be anywhere where they're pouring metal, um, pour, pouring molten metal, any kind of large manufacturing, um, you know, steel mills, um, iron, aluminum, whatever the case may be. We really, uh, that's kind of our, our bread and butter for throughout our company's history has been in, uh, in foundry wear, um, both aluminized and non-aluminized protective clothing. Probably our second largest uh, market is going to be arc flash clothing. Um, I could do probably a whole series of presentations on, on arc flash clothing. I'm sure you've probably heard of it before, but basically um, anytime that, that you're working in, um, in live electrical environments on any kind of, you know, or your customers, whether it's electrical contractors or service people or anything like that, um, that you're actually required to be in arc flash clothing, which um, will look something along the lines of one of these four options as far as what you're the kind of clothing that you're wearing anything from ppe level one uh all the way to four when you're in this kind of beekeeper hood um like i said there's a lot more that i, I could uh kind of go into with arc flash but um as as time permits i'll just say um arc flash is is growing you know more and more like i said it's become really one of our largest selling um, market segments of products uh, we sell these in full kits um, uh, again, target. This is targeting any kind of heavy manufacturing, any large manufacturing facilities, or really anywhere where electrical work is being done, um, especially in live situations. That that arc flash clothing is needed. For us, um, you can compare us kind of to, um, you know, Salisbury, for example, when it comes to the arc flash offerings. Uh, one of the big things for us, though, is is lead times and pricing. Um, we pretty much, I call it a stock and assemble with our arc flash kits. So that clothing we pretty much just have on the shelves and then any of the lead time you're waiting on is pretty much just to assemble all that clothing together. Um, so that's gonna be one of the big benefits. You're not gonna have long lead times on the arc flash clothing, which is sometimes an issue uh, with some of our competitors. 
Additionally, uh, pricing is going to be very competitive. In fact, uh, a lot of times when I'll show people, you know, our pricing for our flash clothing, they say, well, you know, compared to this other company I'm looking at, it's so much cheaper. So there must be something different or wrong with it. And I always say the same thing, which is we're all getting the fabrics from the same places. It's really just about, you know, brand name versus versus not. So um, welding protection. Uh, this can be as simple as the kind of classic. Let's see where we are here. The classic green uh, FR cotton jackets, uh, which everybody in the industry is pretty familiar with here. Um, the sleeves, the jackets, these are all going to be stock things for us. However, we can get really, really uh, uh, kind of specific and, and even these, this is our moto jacket. So if you want to get a little bit more custom, a little bit more style, uh, stylish when it comes to uh, your welding garments and your customer's welding garments, this just offers other options other than the standard um, sort of compliance wear green jackets, which, which is what I like to call them. Um, so again, tr you're still going to be selling a lot of those green jackets, but some places are looking for more protection or, or you know, just different styles, and that's something else that we can offer. Here's our flash fire protection catalog. Uh, this is going to kind of go over all of our um, FR coveralls. Um, this is going to be another stock, very, very popular set of items. Um, FR coveralls in in whether you need it in navy or khaki or red or blue, or, you know, royal blue. Um, we've got all of those in stock in, in many different sizes. And, and again, I'm just sort of picking out some things that are some of the larger selling items for us. A couple more here, industrial face shields. Um, this is going to be both for, this is basically the, whether it's the high heat clear shields, cobalt blue, um, high heat gold, uh, green. We've got many of these in stock along with, along with the brackets uh, as well. Um, it, now we're getting into the cold, the cold weather months here. Uh, you guys are, are definitely familiar with uh, with how cold this can this uh, part of the country can get. So um, this these are really really big sellers for us. These balaclavas, um, both the Nomex balaclavas up here, uh, the Carbonex balaclavas down there. Uh, we sell a lot of those, especially this time of year. And lastly, um, mechanics gloves. We have a whole a whole line of uh, uh, mechanics gloves here. Um, depending on you know what the job is, depending on what the kind of work is, um, we've got those all in stock as well. So that's kind of some of our stock items. Uh, but just to kind of go over a couple other things uh, for us, like I said before, I, I want you to think of us as a, as really your one-stop shop for any kind of uh, custom FR clothing, and that's really across the board. Um, you know, we'll do things like we even do custom bags. We'll do tarps, we'll do, uh, you know, welding screens or shields or, you know, and, and, and can get very specific with a lot of that stuff. But, you know, if you need a three-armed coat, we can make you a three-armed coat. I don't know why you'd need one, but we can uh, we can make it. Uh, we've we've really seen a lot of different things. Um, and we're, and, and uh, between myself and Dan and everybody else at the company, we, we get all different kinds of requests. Um, and because of that, we're really well suited to... Uh, manufacture all different kinds of items, uh, even really outside the box things. So we always joke that you know we'll we'll take the weirdest requests ever. Never be afraid just to ask because because we'll do it for you. Um, with you guys, there's no order minimums. Uh, that's another foundational belief that we have as far as as the way that we operate here. Uh, you don't have to, you know I think order minimums are not having order minimums is good for stock stuff, but I think it's more important to think about that from a customization aspect. So if you have a project. That's you know there's not necessarily a stock item for. We'll work on a custom project for you, you know, as, and that's that's you know R and D, that sampling process, that's all of that, and you don't have to worry about it being some large opportunity. It can just be one right-handed glove if it needs to be a right-handed glove that's really customized. Again, we make all of our FR gloves right here in Skokie uh, as well, our high heat gloves. Um, so again, uh, it doesn't matter the the size of the opportunity, it doesn't matter you know what it is uh, if it's in that realm of what we do, uh, we're going to help you out with it. Um, like I said, we're we're problem solvers here. Uh, we don't want uh, cost or lead time or anything like that to ever get in the way. So um, you can always call us and just explain your situation. Be honest with us, and we'll tell you. You know, if you need something out, it, you know, our our lead times are two to three weeks on anything made to order. Um, that's generally pretty well accepted throughout throughout the industry, as from what we've heard. But if you need something out sooner, uh, don't let that two to three weeks be a barrier for for going elsewhere or whatever. Just tell us, and and we'll work with you. We really want to be uh, as easy to work with as possible in that sense. Um, a couple other things I want to talk about as far as customization is 
uh, let's just say you're customizing a an aluminized jacket. So something like, let's see here, there's a lot of different, different, different options here, but let's say you're customizing a jacket like this, um, something for a, for a steel mill. So um, these materials are, are expensive. The fabrics are expensive, you know, the, especially these these FR or, or aluminized fabrics. Um, so there's a couple different value uh, value adds as far as customization. Um, we don't have any kind of you know premium for for customization. We, that's just a part of our business, so it's built in the uh, built in the recipe here for what we do. Um, but if we'll always kind of go and, and we'll if if you allow us speak to your customer or if you can relay information from your customer to us. And find out what exactly the hazard is. So if the hazard is primarily on the front of the body, um, and it, they don't have as much of a risk for a splash or for heat on the back, you know maybe we'll do a less expensive material on the back, and that'll bring the price of the garment down quite a bit. But additionally, we it's about comfort. Um, we know that wearing a lot of these materials, and especially when you talk about aluminized clothing, is not the most comfortable thing ever, and we understand that. Uh, safety is always going to be the number one priority for us, uh, but where we can, we're always going to make, uh, and we're always experimenting with, you know, over 300 different fabrics um, that are going to be the lightest weight, uh, the most breathable, the most comfortable, and the most protective, most importantly. Um, and and specifically, design-wise and stylistically, we're always going to do things to make these garments as wearable as possible um, as well. Um, so the last thing I want to talk about, and, and again, thank you for, for uh taking some time to listen to me here today is uh, just kind of how we've been working here in the the, the virtual uh, age with with COVID and everything. Um, hopefully sooner than later we can all meet face to face and, and go on. Um, you know the way that we work best in, in non-pandemic times is definitely in in, in person uh, joint calls with your customers where we can really see the hazard itself, see the job, see what they're doing, determine what the best product for them would be while working with them and working with you. But you know, obviously, that's there's a limitation there with everything going on as far as being in person. But we're we you know we've gotten really flexible whether whether we get you know photos or whether we get videos or if you need to hop on uh, calls with us, my, myself or Dan or any of our other associates here, um, we'll walk you through the process and actually give you a list of everything that you can ask your customer. We'll talk to your customer directly as well uh, if you want us to, um, if you want to make that introduction. But if not, uh, you, we'll give you the, the questions to ask that will really help us out. Um, we're very open again to to doing these calls like this for specific projects or, or really anything if you just have some questions. Um, so that's kind of what we've been doing. Again, it's it's certainly not the most high tech in the world as far as uh, we don't have any kind of big studio set up in our in our uh, building. I wish we did maybe one day. But in the meantime, just let us know what you need and, and we'll get you the information um, for that. So. Once again, I'm Sam Sherman. Uh, our company is Chicago Protective Apparel. You can um, find out more information about us on chicagoprotective.com. Um, our number for the home office here is 847-674-7900. Uh, my personal cell phone number is 847-636-2440. Uh, feel free to text me, call me, um, whatever you need. Uh, at some point, I'll have, uh, if I get a contact list, um, from you guys, I can have Dan Karp reach out to all of you directly as well, who again is our national sales manager. Uh, once again, thank you so much for, for tuning in and, uh, and listening to hear about Chicago Protective Apparel. Thank you so much for joining us today and thank you for our vendors as well. Unfortunately, we don't have time for a live Q&A session. However, please feel free to send any questions that you have and we'll make sure that we get those answered for you. This has been December's Digital Safety Con with Connie Safety. Thank you so much and have a safe day.